Okay, it's taking a bit to yeah start the recording. All right, so um, we're now in chapter eight, where we will read about the strategies of Satan. Till now, we are very clear. Uh, we have discussed many instances, uh, you know, where uh, God's power was released in scripture, in personal life. We've also talked about uh, how Christ Jesus has uh, uh, won the victory for us on the cross and defeated Satan. Uh, we've seen how we can apply that in our lives. Uh, but then, you know, we might have a question that... Uh, as believers, if Jesus has won victory in, in such a grand way, why is it that the enemy, though he is defeated, is not stopping his works? Okay, one reason we have already given, we have said that there is a time at which uh, he will be completely uh, removed from this earth and uh, he will receive his punishment after judgment uh, but then while satan is here and he knows that he is defeated his works have not stopped in uh, that sense they still continue is defeated but should he not accept his defeat and uh, um, just resign from the work that he's doing. So why is it that he continues to uh, attack believers? Why why is it that he continues to uh, you know cause uh, destruction in people's lives? So the way we can understand this is, though Satan is defeated, uh, also notice that his time here on earth is very very limited. Okay, he knows he's defeated. He knows his time is limited and he continues to be, you know, with, with that uh, deceit and pride in himself uh, where he will not stop the activities that he's engaged in. So any enemy who has very little time and who knows that you know, they are going to be imprisoned or caught, what will they do? You know, they will use all the energy that they have in the remaining time so that they can cause you know sufficient destruction isn't it even in places where there are uh, enemies that are defeated and they they want to take over a land or something like that they know that they don't have the full uh, full uh, you know victory or the capacity what do they do they just play around in something called as guerrilla tactics, okay, where they will go, they will try to influence the people, they will try to, um, in an illegal, unlawful way, get a hold of people's resources. So it's like pl playing from, uh, it's like backdoor entry and playing, uh, it, not in the fort, but sort of uh, just being around and, and you know, uh, still causing destruction. And that's exactly what Satan is trying to do. He knows he's defeated. He knows he has a little bit of time. But he's doing his best. He knows he can't enter through the main gate. So he's entering through the back gate and causing, you know, as much chaos as possible. So that is why all the more as we see the uh, days leading up to what God has spoken in his word, you know, the way this world will, will uh, uh, end and all that. You see, he is trying to be very aggressive and show his power uh, just so that, you know, he, he expends all the energy that he has to cause maximum destruction. So that is how you see the enemy working. Now, more specifically, we're talking about believers. What does he do? Being a defeated foe and uh, being so aggressive in his schemes, his plots, his, his uh, methods, what does he do in the lives of believers? You know, there are three main things that he tries to do in people's lives. Uh, and uh, that's what we are going to look at today. One is mind games. 
so he tries to um, really maximize on this mind games second is he tries to enter in through open doors okay now the third one is violations and intrusions so we will look at all these three one by one because we have understood that jesus has won the victory and that satan is defeated and yet active what we need to do is we have to uh, be wise and take authority so if we keep him out then we will be able to overcome all these methods and games which satan is actually playing with us so coming to mind games we saw that scripture from second corinthians 2:11 which says lest satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices so there are devices plots schemes that satan has and we have to be aware of it okay these mental tactics so when we are aware that's when we can create defenses against what satan is doing so how does he work do he works uh, in our minds in the lives of unbelievers we've already said you know how he influences them and brings about spiritual blindness so that's something he does with the help of his demons and uh, when it comes to believers okay uh, he works on their minds to um, sort of uh, take their thoughts away from god's word so he's working in the area of the thoughts he is working in the area of the progression of thoughts if you recall when we talked earlier about the methods of working uh, of uh, satan we said that if we are not careful then a thought can lead into an argument in somebody's mind and uh, that can move further and become a sort of a, a certain reasoning that the person has and then turn into mental strongholds so which is why we are told that you know we must take every thought captive so everything begins with a thought satan can even plant thoughts in our minds now these thoughts can be uh, thoughts of unforgiveness they can be thoughts of uh, uh, pride they can be thoughts of lust they can be it's just a one solitary thought that comes to our minds now if we don't take charge of it and immediately the way satan spoke to jesus we saw that in uh, uh, luke 4 when jesus was tempted and see you know satan comes and he says all these kingdoms i will give it to you so he presents he puts thoughts in jesus said what does jesus do immediately jesus responds with it is written so immediately he brings that thought captive uh, and and aligns it to the thought of god now if we fail to do that only then we will see the progression okay so uh, what is the progression arguments there's nothing wrong it's okay everybody does it at the age that you are in it's all right you know uh this is this is how normal life is arguments within our minds will begin <clears throat> then reasoning we will have that reasoning that yeah at this age uh, people should do this that's nothing wrong with that it's not sinful you know you talk about uh, some uh, something immoral to do or uh, you know uh, some sort of a habit that people are getting into so there is a reasoning so they are comfortably able to do those things repeatedly because a certain reasoning has set in their minds and you know strongholds strongholds are uh, the way the name itself suggests strongholds are like a fortress they are like a fortress and it is said that demons right when we say a person is demonized demons don't live in our spirit they can live in our soul and where do they usually live they live in these strongholds emotional strongholds mental strongholds where we have given permission to lies of the enemy uh, about anything right we, but for a long time we never brought those thoughts down but let's say fear started with the thought went on to becoming an argument we gave in to it now it has become our reasoning yeah we can't do this because uh, if we do this satan will attack us 
So it has become a reasoning and you live by that and it becomes a stronghold. You're so paralyzed by fear. And what does enemy do with the stronghold? Demons can now come and they can take charge. And slowly they are taking charge of the mental faculty. So that's how this entire progression happens. And you know, he would love to uh, continue to do this, plan thoughts. Uh, he can be very crafty uh, because you know that he's a deceiver. He will try to uh, speak lies as if they are truth. And he will try to um, weaken us. He can weaken us. He, he wants to, in fact, weaken our will, weaken our uh, thought pattern, which is as per God's word, so that it becomes corrupted. And you know, we are willing to do whatever he is suggesting. So what we see more and more is that Satan will do his best. Remember, we said the 1 Peter 5, 8, we, we talked about how the enemy is like a roaring lion. He's He's waiting. It's like you're waiting to charge. If you have a pet at home and uh, you ever trained it to eat uh, the meal, what happens? The moment they see their favorite food, they smell it, the, they're ready to pounce. Okay? And that's how Satan is. All the more because his time is less. So he's doing everything he can to attack the believers. And especially through mind games. And it starts generally through thoughts. He can put blindness on the uh, spiritual understanding of people. He can be very crafty to deceive people. So in all these ways, he tries to go about attacking them. But what can a believer do? We will study about the weapons with which we can come against the enemy soon. And we will study about it in detail. But for now, um, if you can uh, think of Ephesians chapter 6. The armor uh, of God has been mentioned there, which a believer can use that can help the believer to stand against the attacks of the mind. Okay, so what, what does this armor uh, work as? One, the parts of the armor, helmet of salvation, helmet of salvation. What does the helmet of salvation cover? It covers our mind so spiritually this means that our minds are aware of the uh, what has happened through salvation for us so what has happened so we understand that jesus has forgiven us we understand that now we are placed in christ jesus now we understand that you know we have been given authority we have been given dominion we have every blessing we have the blessings of the cross. We have the blessings of Abraham. We have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. So helmet of salvation is the knowledge of salvation. Now when a believer lives their life with the knowledge that they have all this, it's not easy for Satan to come and plant a thought and say, God doesn't love you. Immediately, what will the believer say? With a renewed mind, because they have the helmet of salvation. They have understood what salvation has done for us. So the believer would say, hey, that's not true. God really loves me. You know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You know, what manner of love is this that uh, uh, God should call us his own children? So you know, we can come up with all these scriptures and put it against the devil and say, no, devil, it is written. And that is how the helmet of salvation really helps because it helps us know who we are in Christ. And if Satan is trying to touch us in any way, we can immediately say, no, I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You know, I have been redeemed. Satan, you can't do this. So a believer can use the helmet of salvation. In other words, the knowledge of what salvation has done for the believer. And that becomes a part of the armor that you and I carry. Now, coming to breastplate of righteousness. So what is the breastplate of righteousness? Uh, we uh, know what is right and wrong. Okay? According to the character of God, we recognize that. And so when Satan tries to induce us and say, it's okay, a little bit of sin is not going to do anything, or uh, some lies here and there, or some uh, you know compromise here and there. But 
for a believer who is protecting himself he will use the breastplate of righteousness and we will say no devil it's not right uh, you know scripture says uh, that that uh, uh, jesus also said you know i am the way the truth and the life so when my god is the truth how can i lie god does not lie so we must be like god we should not lie so based on the word of god we are constantly realigning recalibrating ourselves to what is right and wrong so that we can put on you know that that uh, righteousness that jesus already you know scriptures say right that we have already become the righteousness of god in christ jesus but we have to live it out so we are living that righteous life and that becomes a covering for us and that is the breastplate of righteousness so satan is trying to penetrate our mind but okay no i am carrying the breastplate of righteousness so you can't penetrate belt of truth now the belt of truth once again you know it's like a uh, sort of uh, uh, working together with righteousness itself isn't it so the truth of god's word what is the truth about the word of god it is a final authority for us okay now satan might come and say no no why do you want to believe that uh, god's word is the final authority how about you know you take from uh, some other philosophies there is so much wisdom there as well but when you know the truth you are saying don't try to deceive me i know what god's word says you know god's word is established in the heavens and uh, so no i am not going to receive your lies or let's let's put it more practically you know the truth about different things in life uh, the truth about um, uh, uh, you know faith in god the truth about uh, uh, hard work diligent being diligent the truth about treating people well in relationships so these are all our everyday practical issues okay but when we have the truth about all these matters then the enemy cannot shake us the you know truth about justice so many things are happening in the world around us what is the standard that i should have get into god's word try to find out okay what is the truth so based on the truth of god's word i'm going to make my standard then what happens it becomes a belt of truth in my life and i am protected and i'm on the side of truth what happens i become protected no wonder it is known as the armor of god so we have to put on the armor of god shoes of the good news of peace to move forward so what is this so basically you know i have chosen to walk um with uh, with you know in a cordial way in a loving way i have chosen to avoid you know, strife ill will anger bitterness uh, evil you know, doing evil to people i have decided i am not going to engage in those things so when i am walking with the lord in this manner i put on the shoes of peace and of the gospel of god so uh, gospel is i am ready to share whenever there is an opportunity i am ready to share what the lord jesus has done so then what happens this also becomes my defense so all these uh, all these pieces of the armor they are not an object but they are uh, our uh, you know something that that we are aligning ourselves to as per what god has spoken and that gives us protection against the mind games that the enemy is playing the shield of faith the shield of faith is very very important because what you know satan loves to shake our faith if a believer in a believer's life their faith can be shaken satan knows i can get this person okay so that is why it is known as shield of faith uh in the mind he could plant thoughts of fear he could plant thoughts of anxiety he could plant thoughts that say that god doesn't care god has forgotten god has abandoned so then what happens to the believer the faith starts shaking oh if i don't have the certainty of uh, you know salvation if i don't have the certainty of god's help what will happen to me then it's like the 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 attacks if you want to imagine with me those days 
this uh, armor of god is taken from the roman soldiers the kind of outfit that they used to have uh, in the front lines so you would notice that they had all these elements in the armor and in front they hold a metal shield like that the enemies you know, they would attack with uh, arrows or any other you know offensive item and you come hit and fall off so it was very important for the uh for the soldiers to hold the shield and sort of keep covering themselves all the time um if they missed it if they missed holding up the shield then what happens the arrow will hit you where will it hit it it would generally be directed to the the heart or the chest uh, area so where you have your some of your vital organs and you know you could just die in the same way today satan wants to affect our hearts or you know the core of our being through the thoughts that he plants and many of these thoughts are like those arrows they're coming and hitting us every day okay but as a believer i have to hold up my faith every day i have to hold up my faith and say what god says i am going to say what god says about me i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus you know um uh, you you say i have not received a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind you know i have not received a spirit of bondage uh, but i have uh, received the spirit by which i cry out abba father so i have to be so grounded in god's word and my faith in god's word because if i can do that his mind games will just fall to the ground he can't play with uh, a believer who is sound and you know rooted and grounded in the faith so that is how we overcome the mind games the enemy tries to play uh, and he does this with all the believers he does it with all the believers in different ways so we can understand in our own lives you know what are some of the regular things that he uses so uh, you can take some time and think about it now uh, it will really help us because you know when we go for battle no as much as we are prepared i might have all the weapons but i also have to think how will this enemy attack me will he attack from this side or that side or so when i have some idea then i know okay then i should be ready i should not give him chance uh, you know this in in all these angles now, i know many of us we have not directly been soldiers in a war and all but think of games that you play you know, even badminton or shuttlecock or all that because then you're thinking or chess you're thinking huh, he could do this so i have to be like this so in our daily life we can we can know ourselves and our challenges and know that okay i must make sure that uh, you know if i i'm going through anxiety then i must make sure that i take time in prayer every day because i know that is an area where uh, satan can play mind games with me okay so i make sure i take that time or if i'm having doubts in a certain aspect of my faith then i know okay i must make sure that i study god's word and equip myself in that area uh, then i'm strong enough you know or let's say in the ministry flowing in the gifts of the spirit you're finding it difficult i'm not having the faith to do it and every time you know you come under condemnation then you know okay i will study about the gifts of the spirit then i know how to flow in it better so basically take charge understand that these are ways in which satan works in general and more specifically he has done these kind of things in in my life so how can i protect myself so personally you can give time to study of god's word prayer or keeping certain scriptures okay so when you know okay i know that i'm suffering with these evil thoughts then what should i do okay immediately some scriptures okay i can't have uh, I, i cannot accommodate evil thoughts in my mind because the scripture says that uh, may the words of my mouth may the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight so it is the will of god that that uh, we be sanctified 
be holy as i am holy so i can immediately switch to war war mode and start bringing out all these verses so this is the way which we will protect ourselves from the mind games of the devil also one more thing which is mentioned here in our notes is ephesians 4:27 it says nor give place to the devil okay nor give place to the devil so uh we have to be alert about our own lives and think okay uh is there in any way uh, is there any way through which uh satan can enter you know into into my life or my family or my ministry <coughs> and if you sense that then take charge of it it could be it could be a sin it could be a sin um it let's say some compromise okay, in our in our uh, i'm just giving some random example let's say finances okay, i'm willing to compromise in in the way i handle my finances i don't mind a little bit here there so that's how it starts out but what is happening now satan got a foothold right now it's not a big matter but as we move forward he knows i can now completely enter i can make a big mess of you know this person's uh, 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 finances and thereby his life his family his ministry everything so footholds we have to be careful it could just begin as a thought it could just begin as a suggestion but we have to be aware we should be quick to catch the devil like jesus and say no devil it is written so don't try to change my standards these are my standards i will go by these standards so don't give the devil this uh, verse says right nor give place to the devil it means don't give the devil any opportunity don't give him any power or any occasion uh, or, or anything to to uh, enter in okay into our lives so we have to be very very careful so mind games is something that he loves to play against the believers the next thing here is open doors the open doors what are these open doors as i already said the foothold you no know, into somebody's life sin is a classic open door uh, believers who you know one one foot in the world one foot uh, in god and uh, we think we can just make it like that but if you want to put it this way you we are playing with fire satan is not so you know he wants to make sure to destroy so we can't say that yeah i will i will align little bit with him what is wrong nothing i'm getting pleasure out of it or i'm getting um, you know fame out of it or i'm getting power out of it i'm getting money out of it but sooner or later it will lead to destruction so sin as a believer no wonder the lord's prayer jesus taught us right in our daily prayer uh, he taught us to pray lord no forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us so it's very important for me on a daily basis to come to a place where i say lord everything that i know is wrong i confess it and i and i say lord help me to align myself to you so then what am i doing you know through confession 1 john 1 7 through 9 we see uh, uh, there john said if we confess our sins then he is faithful and just to forgive us and remove uh, our sins as far as the east is from the west so god is faithful to do that but he wants that attitude of uh, humility repentance from the believer so when i can walk like that i think in the prayer prayer uh, and intercession course i have told us keep short accounts with god daily accounts with god where you are dealing with things immediately then what happens 
when satan comes and he's checking uh, any door did they leave it open by mistake you know is it open a thing will be open we have dealt with sin right we have confessed it we also repent what is repent no repentance uh, in our language it just means making a u turn or turning around in the opposite direction and stopping you know that sin that we were engaged in so living a life like that will not leave any open doors for the devil in the case of unconfessed sin okay it's not so much the sins of um, uh, you know it since that we are ignorant about i'm not talking about that you know sometimes sins are unconfessed because you probably didn't know that you made a mistake so that's a different scenario but i'm talking about knowing something is wrong and not dealing with it so unconfessed unrepented sin now that is something satan loves it's an open door inviting the devil to come in so he can easily come in so we have to deal with sin in our lives now uh, apart from this we also see you know scriptures talk about unbelief uh, scriptures how that fear is not a godly thing and you know um, unforgiveness hatred all these things in the heart of a man so these are all what works of the flesh works of the flesh and they they are sin and leading us deeper and deeper into you know other kinds of things so we have to get rid of these things and who is our best example you know when we talk about walking a, a living righteously um people usually tend to suggest or oh, be like this person or be like this pastor or be like this leader but you see our best example is the lord jesus now maybe even the people who we are looking up to uh for whatever reason their standards are not like the standards of jesus so jesus is our standard we can't justify our lower standard saying oh but even my mentor is doing it or you know my leader is doing it so i can also do it we can't justify like that because our standard should be the standard of jesus and anything that is a miss what is sin sin simply means missing the mark so if we have missed the mark as far as god's word god's standards are concerned then do we just need to uh, sincerely confess repent and shut the door on the devil that way so he will have uh, no entry point into our lives uh, and we would have received the cleansing work of the blood of jesus uh, in uh, you know in our cells so um, we have to through sin uh, we might open the doors so keep it shut now there's a little bit more explanation in our notes here and i will just share that before i move on to the next way in which doors can be opened which is the words we speak so when it comes to sin you know why why uh, do people fall into sin one is our fleshly weaknesses we have not dealt with those weaknesses okay so um, again you know these these are things that our flesh craves fame pride or food or uh, you know whatever uh, just uh, laziness you just don't want to do any work so our flesh wants things um contrary to what god has told us to have so it's our own issue these are our weaknesses these are fleshly weaknesses and there are many ways to overcome this the first and foremost as i've been saying you can study god's word because god's word will transform us inside out it is a uh, it's sharper than any two edged sword so you can apply god's word we can pray we know that our spirit man is strengthened when we pray we can pray in the pray in the spirit because you know how uh, clearly paul writes that uh, one is edified when you pray in the uh, when you pray in tongues what happens we edify ourselves but you know prophecy edifies the the uh, 
body of believers so we understand okay fine i can pray in tongues so you are overcoming the weaknesses of your flesh in all these ways fasting fasting also helps us overcome the weaknesses of our flesh uh, and also walking in righteousness when you keep denying your flesh no no you can't do this you can't do this you're literally taming your flesh okay so you're walking in finally you come to a place of self control okay and self control what is self control it is a fruit of the holy spirit uh, and it is produced through our lives as we uh, continually keep walking with the lord so we can overcome our fleshly weaknesses and satan on the other hand so this this fleshly weaknesses is an internal issue which we have to deal with the other issue is external that is temptations or influence of satan he will try to induce or he will try to cajole us he will try to uh, you know uh attract us uh invite us to to do certain things or think usually it's not do first usually it is think first and uh if we are not careful enough we might think but i didn't do anything but it's going towards that remember we we saw in passages from james and all that when when desire is uh, full grown then it gives rise to sin so things begin with thought desire so external that is temptation of the devil how do you deal with the temptations that satan brings again same thing be ready with the word if you know that some area is my weakness i am weak in this area then be ready with four five scriptures because you don't know what time you might be tempted you could say those scriptures or if it helps to let's say you go to a place uh, or you watch something and it triggers you to do wrong stuff uh then don't go there because the bible says right flee youthful lust just get out of there run away run away never give an occasion for that temptation to catch you so these are all things that believers can do to keep the short door shut and notice both of this whether we are struggling with fleshly weaknesses or externally temptations are coming we still have the capacity to overcome so the choice to whether i want to sin or you know i want to do the right thing it is mine i need to yield to what god is saying and that way i can walk in righteousness and i can uh, overcome what the enemy is doing now uh in order to overcome again in your notes the same things that i have i have kind of mentioned uh submit to god through his word crucify the flesh with the help of the holy spirit make no provision for the flesh okay so make no provision for the flesh is like you know example is uh, let's say i am tempted to eat lot of sweets good thing to do is don't buy sweets don't keep sweets in your fridge don't keep sweets in your cupboard <laughs> because if you keep then what happens you made some provision for the flesh then in a in a moment of weakness you'll think on chocolate no nothing will happen and then you eat it off so in this way in all other areas of our life if something is tempting us just stay away from it and make sure that you know you are you are very careful uh, and one one more thing we can do is you can pray because prayer also helps us to um keep a guard you know pray that you may not fall into temptation so prayer also really helps us to overcome okay uh yeah so we will go on to the next uh, yeah okay i think that's a question who's this okay no question i thought i heard a sound all right so any any uh, thoughts questions everyone okay not too much all right uh, yeah just give me a moment i'll my power is low
Okay, great. So we've understood, you know, that we have to live a righteous life and that way Satan will not be able to enter. Now, open doors through words. Um, so words are emphasized in scripture. We know from Proverbs 18, 21 that life and death is in the power of the tongue. And uh, God has designed some sort of an authority and a creative power in the words that we speak. Even when he created the world, he said, let there be light and there was light. So uh, God spoke to release his authority. And so in the same manner, uh, when we speak over our lives, uh, we are releasing authority now this could be this could be the correct kind of words these could be words of blessing these could be words in line with god and his word they could be words that you know how we said that uh, angels when we talked about demons and angels we said angels are ministering spirits and we saw in psalms how they they um, uh, act in accordance to the word of god so when i'm speaking god's word the angelic activity is is uh, you know activated. So all this happens when we speak God's word, um, and we can see its power. But then, when we speak opposite to God's word, that ends up being the open door. Okay, so we are simply classifying that as wrong words. So let's say instead of words that affirm who we are in Christ, we go ahead and say, no, but I'm not forgiven. I don't feel sanctified and holy. Uh, I am fearful. I am filled with fear. It becomes an open door for the devil. Then we are constantly, um, you know, it's not, it's not the truth of God's word, isn't it? So, when we speak the right words, we are believing that the power of those right words are released. Same thing happens when we speak wrong words also. The power of those words are being released over either our life or we could speak unbelief, we could speak um, fear and condemnation over people around us, people who uh, God has given under our authority. So especially family, right? Children. Um, uh, so... When we speak these words, we end up, you know, allowing space for the devil to work. Now, taking this to, uh, you know, just understand the dedications that we had spoken about earlier. Remember, we said that sometimes people dedicate using the words that they speak. So there can be words of dedication that people have spoken uh, over their children or their grandchildren many years before. And uh, now there is an open door through that, that Satan is actually able to uh, attack people. So how do we overcome it? Again, speak God's word. By faith, we speak the opposite of what the enemy is saying. Right? And we can also, uh, because we said that we can bind uh, we can rebuke, we can cast out, so we can take authority and we can also cancel. We say that you can cancel or destroy uh, the words that have been spoken, the lies, in other words, the lies that have been spoken over our lives. So when you do that, what happens? The doors are shut. Okay. Now, uh, remember, we said Job. Job said that whatever I feared, has come upon me. Whatever I feared has come upon me. So sometimes we end up releasing that fear through our words. We say that, okay, God, I, I know God will help me, God will help me. And uh, when you don't see what you expected, suddenly the words come out. I knew nothing is going to happen. You know? So What's happening here? Our faith is showing itself in what we truly believe. And it's coming out in the words that we are speaking. So how do we work on this? Again, best way is meditate, meditate, meditate on God's word. 
because that is our standard, isn't it? And uh, how uh, in Romans 12, we say, we have to renew our minds. Take this analogy. Analogy is, uh, let's say that uh, this room in which you know I'm sitting and teaching all of you, uh, if it is made with mud bricks, okay, somebody has laid mud bricks and they've made it. Now, for me to make a stronger cement, uh, like a strong cement brick room, I have to sit and remove every mud brick and in the place of that mud brick, I have to put a cement brick. So think about that. Remove everything, again put. That is what renewing the mind is. Our mind has already got thoughts, patterns in it. But God's word says that we must renew our minds. Don't be conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So replace, replace every lie, every deception, every um, you know uh, standard which is not aligning to God's word with God's word. So for that, what should we do? Get into God's word. Okay, then we will know this is the truth. Okay, I'm putting it into my my mind. Now mind, let it settle down. Let it settle. Down. Use it. Use it. And then that's what we believe. What will start happening? It will start coming out from our mouth. Don't worry, brother. God is there. God will help you. Why? Because that's the faith you carry. Now it's coming out in the time of need. So in that way we can really work on the words that we are speaking. And if wrong words have been spoken, we can again with our words cancel those wrong words. Okay, So that way, we are closing the doors for the devil. So now let's, um, uh, one more thing here given is situations. Situations, I think this also we have uh, seen quite a bit. But yeah, we'll have to look at it a little more in depth. So let me stop right here. We can pray and close for today. Uh, I want to request somebody to please go ahead and pray, please, so that we can wrap up today's session. Okay, let's pray. Yes. Our loving Father, once again, Lord, we thank you so much for speaking to us, Lord, through your daughter. Lord, this uh, afternoon, Lord, we especially pray that you uh, bless us, Lord, that we will be, Lord, very a lot in our personal spiritual life. Lord, we will not compromise in any certain things, Lord. But, Lord, I pray that you bless us. Uh, Holy Spirit, Lord, you always uh, lead us in all the truth. And, Lord, you... Bless us that, Lord, we will come to you, Master, not to Satan, Master. Once again, Lord, I pray for myself and all our dear ones, those who are learning together. Lord, you bless us that uh, in the days to come, Lord, we will uh, see a spiritual uh, growth in our life and our family, Lord. So thank you so much for Pastor. Continuously bless her. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Subhashish. And thank you, everyone. May God bless you. Uh, continue to be strong in God and uh, look forward to meeting you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye.